Hello everyone, Dave here, and welcome to another Gundam build, or should I say, Gunpla build. Today I am building the Tall Geese from Gundam Wing. This is a real grade 1, 117 scale, real grade model. Be building this lovely, lovely suit, telling you all about it, and of course, showing you the final product. Now, let us begin! The Tolgi's technical specifications is classified as a prototype general purpose mobile suit given the mobile number OZ00MS, officially known as, of course, the Tolgi's. Its overall height is 17.4 meters, that's 54 point, no, sorry, 57.087 feet or 685.039 inches. The base weight is 8.8 .8 tons. The power source is an ultra-compact fusion reactor, reactor. The armor material is a titanium alloy proved by a pilot in a standard cockpit in the torso. Manufactured by Oz. First developed in after colony 175 and last seen in after colony 195 the operators of this mobile suit were oz the earth sphere alliance and long chan Lo the known pilots are zex marquis otto and milian long equipment as standard is a self-destruct system with an optional booster unit Standard armaments are fixed Doppler gun, shield, and tomb beam sabers. Additional armaments are handheld missile pods, tempest heap lance in endless waltz, and a halberd in endless waltz. It was first introduced in the Gundam Wing TV show and manga, and mechanical designer was Hajami Kan. Tokai. The Oz 00 mobile suit Torgis, also known as Torgis, is the first in a line of three mobile suits depicted in the mobile suit Gundam Wing series. In the anime, it is stated that the first Torgis was the original armed mobile suit and is the common ancestor of both the Gundams, significantly their prototype, the XXXG. W-W-O, Wing Gundam Zero, and the most mass-produced military mobile suits, most notably the Oz 06 MS Leo and its variants depicted. It was first test piloted after its restoration by an Oz soldier named Otto, and later by its most prolific pilot, Zex Marquis. Technology and compact characteristics of the tall geese. <coughs> Designed by the Gundam scientists, the tall geese was a well rounded unit featuring both long range and many weapons, and also heavy armor coupled with high power boosters. The suit features powerful super vector boosters that are capable of producing acceleration of about 15 Gs but they also put a lot of strain on the pilot. To solve this problem and reduce production costs, the tall geese design was simplified to create the Leo. After Zex defected from Oz, Mike Howard, one of the original designers of the tall geese, equipped the suit with a large detachable boost unit that allowed it to escape Earth's atmosphere. In the Endless Vaults version, a Tempest Heat Lance and Halberd were added to its arsenal, and the suit was eventually upgraded to do the Torgis Flugel, where the Super Vector boosters were replaced with wing binders for better mobility in space. The armaments are a Doppler gun mounted on the right shoulder. This high powered cartridge gun is the Torgis primary weapon and is capable of destroying a Leo easily. It fires beams at an excellent 
rate and can shoot accurately over a long range. An old fashioned muzzle brake is fitted to improve its accuracy. A similar weapon is used by the Leo, but only Torgis can withstand this weapon's recoil. Its shield, the Torgis, carries a round shield to increase defense against both beam and physical attacks. It hangs off to hangs off the Torgis' sol soldier, creating the suit a free hand to hold other weapons if required. The shield also stores a pair of beam sabers. The beam sabers, or beam saber, is a small cylindrical device held in the mobile suit's hand. When operated, and is powered by an energy capacitor that is recharged from a special rack. The beam saber is capable of cutting through any metal that has not been treated with anti-beam coating. The tall geese is equipped with a pair of beam sabers in it, they have charged correct, located as I said, in the shield. It can take a handheld missile pod that can be used for anti-mobile suit and anti-ship combat. Where effective against heavily armoured enemies, the mobile missile pod carries very little ammunition. The Tempest Heat Lance. As its name implies, the Tempest Heat Lance uses thermal energy to heat the lance to a super high temperature, which allows the lance to penetrate the armour of other mobile weapons. This weapon was built as an anti gundam measure based on the last walker's data. It can be fixed to the arm or be handheld using another grip. This weapon is only used by the Endless Waltz version of the Tall Geese. The Halberd. <coughs> the mobile suit's size counterpart to the human weapon. The Halberd consists of an axe blade topped with a spike mounted on a long staff. It can be used for slicing and stabbing attacks. It can also be broken down into parts, allowing it to be assembled by the on the battlefield. Once again, this weapon is only used by the Endless Waltz version of the Tall Geese. Special Equipment and Features The Self-Destruct System The Tall Geese was built to self-destruct should the pilot choose to. A remote deti detonator is placed within the cockpit, and if a dire situation arrives, the pilot can destroy the mobile suit. The system was designed to overload its power system and has enough explosive power to destroy several city blocks. It is a last option tactic if the pilot is incapable of protecting the mobile suit while not allowing it to fall into the enemy's hands. It can also be used as one large explosive device to eradicate large targets. The boost use it unit at n nearly twice the size of the Torgis, this optional equipment is fitted onto the Torgis for special space operations. It has many different models to suit the situation. Parts of the unit can be attached to reduce the weight for short term space travel. The entire unit is fitted on for long term space travel. An entire unit can be jettisoned during combat to avoid the additional weight. The Tall Geese was designed in After Economy 170 by the Gundam scientists and served as the prototype for all significant mobile suits. It was extremely powerful but expensive to mass produce and roll and roughen its pilots. So its design was later simplified, resulting in the Leo. In After Colony 195, the suit was restored and used by Zex Marquis to combat the Gundams between episodes 18 and 22. Zex Targis is modified for space travel, allowing Zex, as Miliara Peacecraft, to visit the colonies. <coughs> In episode 34, Zex Targis is destroyed via self destruction, allowing Zex to claim the Wing Zero. The remaining spare parts of Zex's Torgis were later assembled into a Torgis for Trey's Kushunata and christened the Torgis 2. 
Another tourist, nicknamed Xinglong, was developed by Master O of the Long Clan, of which Ching Wufu was a member, and was destroyed while defending the Long Clan's colony in after colony 194. The tall geese appeared in the episode zero and glory of Luz's manga and lacking a mask over its camera making it more similar to a Leo. There are four different variants of the tall geese. The tall geese flugel, the tall geese one, the tall geese two, the tall geese three, and the Torquies Valkyria. Otto's comments about the Torquies being a three times faster than an Ares is a nod to Char Asthma Balls Mobile Suit 06S Zaku 2 command type, which is described as being three times faster than the standard Zaku. While some sources claimed that the Doppler Gun is a shell firing weapon, others such as the Gundam Wing Mobile Suit Encyclopedia noted that it is a beam weapon. The Gundam series, interesting enough, give both, gives the Torquies both a beam and ballistic variant of its Doppler gun attack. Likely, this is a nod to the contradictory accounts. The Torquies' shield is duplicated with different forms of decoration between the anime series, model kits, toys, manga, and other media. The most common descriptions are either as a black-white shield or white with black outer trim and an eagle emblem in its center. The Torquies head is actually a standard Leo with a large yellow camera, though equipped with a mask mounted over it. Unlike the Merciless and Radiance, which feature a similar face setups, the mask cannot react, retract to reveal the camera. The Torgis considered it was the first unit that Oz was fulfilled. There is completely comparable straight to a Gundam, much like the Source Cannon. This extends even to the Gundam's forms. The Torgis version and the Swaltz colours for the 2010 Glory of the Moog Losers manga adaptation features yellow trim and highlights for its body, and white with light grey background backpack boosters, which is based on Crotty's original illustration for the New Type magazine during the original 1995 TV series. It's speculated the yellow trim across the body and light colored boosters was part of the design before being changed for animation region reasons. This would be similar to the explanation Grothy gave for adding additional gold parts to the RX-0 Unicorn Gundam 02 Banshee so it could be identified against dark backgrounds. So that is the lore of the tall geese and its role within the Gundam Wing universe, its armaments, its history. There we are. So, let's see how far we are with this build. But to help you get through the rest of this video, and to make it a bit more interesting, I found some copyright free music for you to enjoy while you watch the rest of this build.
So now for the transformation sequence, make sure the gun's out of the way. So move the backpack a little bit further back. Open up that bit. Open up that bit too. Oop. Come on. Open that bit up. Bit up so you got all the uh, engines there. Then you got eat, eat. Come on, come on. There and there. And there you go, high speed mode activated. The only mobile suit before Epion that is able to keep up with a Gundam. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. As always, comment, rate, and subscribe. Click on videos like here if you want to. Until the next one, this is Dave, building more Gundams.